Shalom, all praise, glory, and honor to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shah, Bahashem, Rahah Kodash, giving double honors to the apostles and elders, a great millstone that rule well, peace, blessings, and salutations to the hopeful elect scattered abroad, coming back with another lesson through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bahashem al Shah, and I pray that this lesson is edifying and making this uh, land back lesson of uh, the brother from Chicago teach what is taught. You know, he was basically going into, um, you know, having a, you know, have, you know, being cheerful. And there was no reason, you know, and there's no reason for a man of the Lord, especially in these times, you know, to be feeling down and, you know, to, to feel depressed or anything in that matter. And we understand we in Babylon, you know, we are, you're, you know, righteously crying to how about Shemal Shah so he could, you know, deliver us out of this, you know, out of this place, okay, but, you know, it's really no reason for any man of the Lord to be feeling down, man, because we got the download, you know, we, hey, the Lord has revealed this truth unto us, the Lord has revealed these prophecies unto us as well, we understand that we aren't always going to be in Babylon <laughs> the rest of our life, all right, we have closure being in this truth, man, we understand that hey, when Yahweh Shah comes back, all right, all all this shit is going to be over, man. It says the fashions of this world passed away, okay? So we need to be, uh, matter of fact, let me get, let me get uh, this one in John, John chapter 16, verse 33, and it reads, these things I have spoken unto you, that in me, that in me, he might have peace. And again, that's with us having closure, man. We have peace. We understand that a hey, Yahweh, Yahweh Shah is going to take us out of this dark state that we in. He's going to take us out of these, these mortal thoughts, man. Okay. And we're going to get into that immortal. All right. The Lord is going to give us those immortal bodies, man. So we have closure. All right. With this truth, we understand that we're not always going to be at the bottom. Okay, for Esau is the end of the world. Jacob is the beginning of it that followed. Okay, so we understand that we aren't always going to be in this condition. All right, and it, and it uh, continue the verse. It says, "In the world ye have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world." And that's what Yahweh Shai did. He overcame this world. And us, a hey, Lord willing, we be a part of that, that number. Us men of the Lord, we are trying to walk. You know, you know, we try to walk a, 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 a like Yahweh Shah. All right. But it says to what? But be of good cheer, man. And let me also get this in Ecclesiasticus uh, or Sirach, the 26th chapter, verse four reads, whether a man be rich or poor, if he have a good heart toward the Lord, he shall at all times rejoice with a cheerful countenance, okay? So that's just to show you that, man, as long as you're doing the things that the Lord requires of you, okay? If you have a, a good mind toward the Lord, all right? Even if your condition or your situation might be the best in this place, because it's Babylon, man. You know, us being subject to payments, you know, us being, you know, us going through hell day to day, all right? But it says that what? If you have a good heart, meaning your mind toward the Lord, he shall at all times rejoice with a cheerful countenance. And, hey, and us brothers, we can contest to that, man. Things aren't things aren't always great here. But what? You know, anytime a brother call you, you know, anytime you watch a lesson, anytime you make a lesson or when you finish making a lesson, man, you have a what? A cheerful countenance because you understand that, man. These words are what? Faithful and true. We understand that. Hey, we 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 are always gonna be in this condition, man. This is what a light affliction. And let me also get uh, let me also get that. And um, I think that's Second Corinthians. Yup, Second Corinthians chapter four verse seventeen, and it reads, "For our light affliction." Matter of fact, let me start at verse six. For which cause we faint not. But though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh 
for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory, okay? Our light affliction. And this is what it is here in Babylon, man. This is all but a light affliction. Verse 18. While we look not at the things which are, are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are internal, man. And that's speaking of what? The kingdom of Yahweh Basham al Shah. All right, again. The fashion of this world passed away. Everything which we seen here in Babylon, all this shit going to be burned up, man. So we look for the things which are not seen. And we know the things which are not seen are going to be internal, man. All right. But this is all a light affliction, man. And we understand. Um, let's also go to um, First Peter. Yep. This is First Peter chapter uh, 4, verse 12. And it reads, be love. Think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you. Going back to A Sirach, the second chapter, if thou come, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare, prepare thyself for temptation, as though some strange thing happened unto you, but rejoice, and as much as ye are partakers of Hamashiach's suffering, that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. All right, because hey, we're gonna reign with you. How about Shemal Shah? Lord willing, we be a part of that hundred, that one hundred and forty-four thousand, man. Okay, but it says to but but rejoice, man. Okay, be of good, be of good countenance. All right, there's no reason why us men of the Lord that's doing this work of Yahweh by Shemal Shah. You know, there's no reason for us, you know, to be down. There's no reason for us to be depressed. There's no reason for us, you know, to be angry, man. Because we got the victory, okay? And the Lord is going to grant us the victory at the end. But that's why we need to continue to keep going. That's why we, we need to keep fighting, all right? Because the Lord is going to fight for us. And let's uh, go. Let's go to Sirach chapter 4, verse 28. And it reads, strive for the truth unto death, and the Lord shall fight for thee, okay? And that's what the Lord is going to do for us, man. The Lord fights for us. When we fight for him, he fights for us. And we see that, man, us coming into this wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. And, I, and I'm sure many brothers can contest, man. As many times they may not have, you know, money in their pocket. You know, their they financial situation may not be looking right. Their car situation, whatever the case may be is, man. But the Lord finds a way, man. There's nothing short for the Lord to do, you know. That's why you 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 definitely cannot put your Habash Mouse on a box, man. Because when things look like, you know, when things look like, you know, when things look like they're done, hey, the Lord always makes a way, man. Okay? And that's our mindset, man. We weren't sent here in Babylon to prosper. We weren't sent here to be movie stars, basketball stars, comedians. All right? We were sent to push this word, man, to rise up this tabernacle of David. All right, we were, we, we were sent here to serve our punishment, man. Okay, so look at, hey, you got to look at things from the grand, the grand view of, of things, man. You have to look at things, you have to look at things for what they are, okay. And let me also grab, um, let me also grab, uh, second Ezra, second, second Ezra is the 14th chapter. Starting at the 14th verse, and it reads, Let go of the mortal thoughts, cast away the burden of men, put off now the weak nature. Okay, let go from the mortal thoughts. <laughs> and, and, and that's why what what is the apostle Gabar? What is Apostle Gabar always says? You gotta be a visionary, man. When you vision when you when you visioning, you know. The kingdom, when you're visioning these Edomites and these different other nations and slaves, man, that boosts up your, you know, your, your, your moral, man. All right. That boosts up, you know, the way that you think, because at the end of the day, these, you know, these, these heathens and Edomites, they can't get to you, man. Even your family. When you understand that hey, it's the Lord sending, you know, a, a demon on your on your people or on these people in the world to mess with you. All right. When you understand that, when you understand these things, you start to move better. All right. Also, you know, your financial situation, that's mortal. Hey, that's mortal thoughts, even though we understand that money is a defense. All right. But we ain't always going to be down in Babylon, man. 
So we have to, and we got to rejoice. We have to look at, we have to be grateful for what we do have, man. And that's just truth. And and it's going to benefit us, man, in these times to come because hey, the Lord is going to be dealing with us. Hey, Isaiah the 65th chapter says, my servants shall drink and the rest of the people shall be hungry. My, um, I mean, thirsty. My servants shall eat. But ye shall be hungry. Speaking about these people in the world, man. So we got to be grateful that the Lord is dealing with us, man. Because at the end of the day, you know, we could have been in the world, man. And also, when you go to um, Hebrews, uh, the 10th, nope, Hebrews, uh, let me try to see that. Hebrews, step one. How about my side dealing with you as sons? I'll try to see if I can find that one. I know it's in Hebrews. Uh, bear with me one second while well, I look for this one. This is yep, yep. This is I. It's lock here. This is Hebrews chapter twelve verse seven, and it reads. For whom the Lord, for whom the Lord loveth, He chastiseth it, and scourgeth every son whom He receiveth. If ye endure chastise, chastising, Yahweh Shemal Shah dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the Father chastiseth not? Okay, so hey, us going through, you know, us going, you know, us catching hell. That's your how about your mouth shot dealing with us, man. And you gotta look, you gotta look at it like that, man. At the end of the day, hey, we are serving our punishment, man. And let me also get Job chapter thirty-eight, verse three, and it says, "Gird up thy loins like a man." For I would demand of thee, and answer thou me. Okay, so gird up thy loin like a man, man. All right, at the end of the day, you got to be a man. And that's what this truth teaches teaches us to be, man. A real man, not what the world teaches us, man. So I just wanted to bring this spirit out through the power and wisdom of Yahweh Shem al Because we, have the, we got the win, man. We got the victory. And Yahweh Shem al is going to grant us the victory at the end, man. But rejoice, man. Be cheerful, be of good countenance, okay? Because we got the blueprint, all right? The Lord, a hey, Yahweh Masha is dealing with us, man. The Lord willing, we be a part of that number, man. So I pray, you know, that this lesson was edifying. And with that, I'm going to give all praise, glory, and honor to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shah Bahashem, Raha Kodash. Double honors to the apostles and elders, a great millstone, every well. Peace, blessings, and salutations to the hopeful elect scattered abroad. Till next time, Shalom, Obaba Bar, Kwame Yash.